Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factoria Space Exploration and the very start of Series 5. Yes, I've decided it's time to draw another line under everything I've done so far and call it a new series. And I do this every so often when I reckon that I've made a so, some when I've reached a certain sort of a point in the game where I can sort of where the things change quite significantly. It's a nice place to draw a line. And each time I do that, it I decide, I think it's a, it's nice to have a sort of a bit of a look back on how things have been going, what I've been up to over the previous series. And so here and uh, and to get to sort of to touch on those sort of things to give it give you an idea of where things have come from and where they're going. So, here we go. Let's start off with a very very quick recap of what series 1 was all about. So, in the first series, I sort of did all of the stuff that you do on Norvis in trying to escape the planet. So we started off as is traditional. Down here we, we uh, went in. These are my these are my starting ore patches. So you can see there's a little bit of stone left. There's a little bit of copper ore left here. There's actually it looks like there is literally no iron ore left. I must have used all of that up because I was so desperate for iron at that point. Um, and as usual, that was just fed from. We had a load of mines in here, and they'll have fed down to some smelting machines down, probably down here somewhere. And I, I would guess in this sort of area, um, and and that was then fed onto it into an into a main bus system as is traditional. And so we started off by making some of the important things. I was building belts here, as you have got to have belts, need lots of belts, um, and then mining drills. Yes, they're definitely vital. Um, assembly machines and red science. So so we started as we meant to go on, getting science up and built as soon as possible. We've then got things like ammunition, and that, that was late. That came later. Green science. We're feeding all of the science packs up into all of these science labs here, and the belt, and and the system carried on with making all of the things that I needed for the uh, for the for my fledgling base. So we have here we have things like trains being train parts being made. Uh, gray science. That's the next science pack. Uh, red circuits, and this uh, this is clearly been completely abandoned and is no longer in use. But I haven't bothered to rip it up because I'm lazy, basically. Then we've got sort of power power generation inserters and so on. and so all all the things that, that a fledgling base needs and as you go along you, you start to get onto more advanced stuff so i've got various different tiers of belts here i probably came back and retrofitted in the red and the blue belts here i don't think i would have built that in at the very start um but then there's lots of batteries being made and all, and all these things are being pumped out onto the bus and eventually in, in a game of factorio you get to the point where you're not really providing enough of the raw materials down the bus for, for all of the intermediate stuff you're making so then you start thinking well i've got all these trains so I'll, let's move off and i'll i'll have a, i'll have a little village over here where i'm going to make all of my green circuits so you bring in um things like you bring in the stone and the copper uh, by by train and you make the green circuits here in this little village and this all went quite nicely um the only thing that went wrong here was at one point i had a, a coronal mass ejection rip through the uh, through the chests down here destroying countless million well certainly countless thousands of um tens of thousands of, of, of green circuits so that was quite upsetting just the sheer amount of resources that was wasted through there but after making a, a village for the green circuits, I went over and I made a, a village for the red circuits as well. And this was working quite happily. Uh, we seem to have run out of plastic, so I'm going to need to have a look at that. But basically, that's that's a nice a nice design for keeps the keeps the uh, keeps the red circuits flowing through, and it's completely self-contained. We're making the green circuits here as well. We're not pulling in green circuits from the other village because, in my experience, that tends to lead to you just not having enough green circuits to go around especially when you then get onto blue circuits as well so and you can see how much of this area is devoted to making the green circuits in order to then pass out then in order to make the red circuits and then finally the blue circuits at the top because making blue circuits is enormously expensive it takes something like 20 i think it's something like 20 green circuits and maybe five red circuits to make one blue circuit it, it's a lot anyway but those then get passed down into the stations down here and we've got and we, we have a supply of blue circuits available for it for wherever they're needed the bus carried on. We, we'd carried on with all the basically fairly vanilla stuff. So there's another couple of science packs here and all the things that go into them. Um, and uh, we've got some... Uh, oh, yeah. We, and then I expanded out. So sometimes I added extra bits and pieces in. So with the artillery train, we put in an extra station for it here. Got an extra iron station in here so I can make blue belts in enormous quantities because I was starting to use them quite heavily. Um, we've got... And then we start to get into some of the more slightly, slightly more space exploration-y stuff up here. So we've got core mining drills being made here. We've got umbrella defences being made. So we've got this massive thing here, the umbrella defence, that, just power, that uh, protects against the coronal mass ejections, like the one I mentioned earlier. Um, but they take enormous amounts of power to do so. So I built up huge areas of accumulators to store the power that would be needed to, to power those, um, those the, the, 
the, all of the, to power the umbrella defense during the mass ejections, uh, and those get gradually charged up by all the all the fields of massive fields of solar panels and the nuclear power stations and so on that are scattered around the place. So we've got plenty of plenty of power being generated around here, and then lots being stored here. Then we carry on a bit further up. We've got more defenses. So these, are, so in in space exploration, you're every so often you'll get attacked by meteorites, and I say every so often, it's every few minutes, so it's quite frequent. Um, and so I've got all these guns here to defend against them. Sometimes one or two guns will be enough, but down on Norvis I've got so much stuff here I wanted to make absolutely sure. So I put in 14 of these guns here to, to, to protect against the uh, the um, incursions of the of, of uh, meteorites. Then we're making lots and lots of, um, uh, what are these things called? Um, rocket control modules, although we seem to have stopped. Again, this is a problem down to a shortage of red circuits by the look of it. So we're going to need to come in. That's down to the shortage of plastic I mentioned earlier. So it's another thing that needs fixing. Then we've got some rocket landing pads here. And this is where I was bringing in some of the exotic materials. So things like the um, uh, iridium and cryonite and beryllium and ice were all being brought in here for anything that needed them. Um, I've since, as you can tell by at a glance here, stopped using these systems because they're just, they're, there are better ways of doing things now later on. So I've abandoned these. They're just sitting there now completely unused. But we've got the signals, they've still got the signal receiver set up here. And it's the same sort of thing. I've not bothered to rip them up because I'm kind of lazy. Uh, yeah, so then to get up to here, this this around here we've got sets of sets of machines for making all of the things that are needed to build in space. So we're making here we're making the space scaffolding, and that allows you to lay it down in an area that's where there's there's no 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 um, asteroids to build on, and allows you to build on on the nothingness of space. And then we've got magic space belts. These are, I mean, they are basically belts, but for some reason there's something special about them that allows you to use them in space. Maybe they're um, I mean, you've got lube being fed in. Maybe it's sort of maybe they maybe they glide more smoothly because of that. Maybe they've got magnets built into them so they stop things drifting off them. I don't really know. All I know is that these are the belts you have to use in space. We're making some of those. We're making all the bits to make rockets around here. So um, uh, making the the um, oh, I can't remember what these things are called. Uh, the cargo modules that they're then putting into the into the rocket set sections. And again, a lot of this could be pulled up because I've I've moved off and done this somewhere else as well. And then we've got, up here we've got uh, life support system. So we're making capsules here that we're then filling with oxygen perhaps here and putting into a box here so that they can be taken out and given to me when I need them. And they've got another one here that picks up the dirty ones, cleans them out and puts them back into here to be refilled so that they can be recycled. Recycling is very important. <laughs> Good for the environment and all that. Then we have another area up here. This, this is um, this is this is a, a series two area. In fact, a lot of this is series two because this is happening for after I moved off the Nova surface. But I'm here, so I'm going to talk about it. But this is a massive array of um, delivery cannons. So along here, we take in all of the all of these different resources that need to be sent off into space or to other planets, and then we can use these cannons to fire them off. And each cannon is pointed at a specific place. So maybe this one's pointed at orbit. This one's pointed at another planet where um, uh, Vulcanite is needed. So is this one, this point of and they're all linked up to these um, signal receivers. So we send signals from the other planet saying, hey, I need some holmium, for example. And then this cannon here will fire off holmium to, to the place that's requesting it. It's a, it's a nice idea, but again, I've, I've, I've just moved beyond that. And as you can see, that this is the end of the bus. At this point, I went, well, I've built everything as I need down here. There's, I'll, just, I'll just stop. I'll, uh, I don't. I, I can. I can do things elsewhere, and this carries on with the, the whole village systems I was mentioning before. So, yes, we've got the ones over here making the circuit boards. Then um, down, where, where else? Where else? We've got some villages. I'm sure we have. Yeah, down here we've got another one. This one's making. Um, this one's making low density structures, or at least it would be if there's any plastic. Um, this one's making concrete um, because we seem to need quite a lot of that, and so they're all being shipped off by train to wherever they're needed. The other thing that you, I tend to do with villaging, in fact, the first thing I tend to do with villaging, um, maybe not, the, maybe not quite first. Anyway, so after the um, the ore patch at the start here gets completely exhausted, you would go, well, I still, I'm still going to need all of these res ore resources. So you build up some stations over here, and then these will truck in um, the iron ore, the copper ore, the stone from from other patches also elsewhere around the uh, around your your factory, and then you can carry on using the old smelting area for a while, and that'll it'll churn through all of the stuff you're bringing in. But after a while, you start to realise that actually this smelting area can't keep up. So you go off and you build a bigger smelting area, like this one over here, as you can see it's, it's um, quite big. And this is taking in copper ore and making copper plates. It's taking in iron ore, making iron plates, iron ore, uh, stone and making stone bricks. And then down here we're taking in iron ore and making steel plates. That's a two-step process, as you can see. Um, 
but again, this was this was this is in 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 a normal game of Factorio playing the vanilla system. This would be sort of the end, the, the final type of um, of smelting system you produce. Sure, you might come along and put in some modules and some beacons and things, but basically this is as far as you go because there isn't a better recipe. However, in space exploration. You can combine, you can bring in your ores like this, and you can bring in vulcanite as well. And if you split this off, so you bring, you then feed ore and vulcanite to all of your smelting machines. And that means you have to, you can then use the industrial furnaces as well, which are the next tier up in the furnaces. So you've got stone, steel, electric, and then finally you get the industrial furnaces, which are, as you can see, they're, they're significantly bigger, but they're also faster and they give you extra options as well, like this, this vulcanite recipe. And you can pump them full with, with uh, five productivity modules. So as you can see over there on the right, we're now producing plus 20% of the amount of uh, amount of copper plates that we would normally be so this saves you an enormous amount of resources but it does use a bit of um a bit of the vulcanite as well so you've got a, you've got a more efficient recipe if, if, if we're looking here at copper uh, copper plates you can make them from copper ore it's a one-to-one -one, or you can make them from eight copper ore and one vulcanite which, get, which gets you 12 copper plates so you're getting an extra 50 percent from that and getting an extra 20 percent from the productivity module and all it costs is that one vulcanite block for every 12. so this is a this is a major improvement to the uh, to, to the system, and so I've got this. It, it's again, it's, it's it's quite a large area, but we're doing copper, we're doing iron, we're doing steel. Oh, steel's down here again. The double double step process, the double step process, and we've got the stone bricks being made as well. And I think we've got glass being done down here as well somewhere. Uh, yes, so here we're, we're crushing stone and then cooking it into glass as well. So we're getting through, getting lots and lots of things done down here, and making up lots and lots of the the ore, different ores. So by the time we've got up to here, that means we're we're ready to start launching rockets and start launching rockets from there, start launch, launching rockets from here, and that takes it all up into into Norvis orbit. Now, I'll show you Norvis orbit, but most of the stuff that I built for for series two, because yes, we've got onto series two now, has all gone. Um, there's not very much of it left at all. There's these few machines down the edge here that are doing some of the old processing, and I just haven't pulled up yet. But essentially, what I had was a rocket land. I had this rocket landing pad here, and then we we're unloading into this provide pa active provider warehouse, and then into various passive provider uh, warehouses. These, these yeah, sorry, storage warehouses, these yellow ones. And then I had a, a bus system where there were a load of um, chests set up that the that the resources would be moved from here into those chests, and then put out onto conveyor belts and passed out just generally along here. And then along here, I had lots of systems, lots and lots and lots of machines making all of the things you need for the first tier of science packs. So in space exploration, you have quite a lot of different sciences available. You start off with the what I call the Norvian sciences. These are the ones that you can do down on, on Norvis itself, make build, um, build them up on the planet and then take them wherever they need to go. You then get onto rocket science, which is a little bit more complicated. It can only be made in space, and you need a few sort of funny things for that, like chemical gel and vulcanite and satellite telemetry that you don't ju you don't just get on on Norvis. Um, and then after that, you've got the, you've got the astronomic sciences, you've got the biological sciences, the energy sciences, the material sciences, and each of these has four tiers. So you make you tier one of each, tier two, tier three, tier four of each one of those. So in series two of this of this playthrough, I went through and I made the first first one of each of these and uh, and and put passed them all through to a to a big science facility. Well, I say big, a, a space science facility that was would process all of that up and and, and get you the um, the various things you needed from there. And in order to do that. I had to go off to various other planets because each of those uh, requires some sort of exotic material. So here you, go, you can see the space, the astronomic science requires beryllium, um, the biological requires vitamelange, the energy requires holmium, and the material requires iridium. So to get those, you have to go off to other planets. So if I bring up the um, star map, and this, this this is my solar system. So I started here on Norvis. I built a space station up in orbit about it. And then there's all these other places we can go. So I went off to Myokin first to go and get some vulcanite. I went off to Tulip to get the vitamelange. I went to Kothar to get the iridium. I went to Henkeseswi to get the uh, holmium. And I went out to Frost to get the beryllium and the cryonite. So each of these, on each of these planets, I built up a system. And let's we have a look, at, a quick look at Tulip, and I'll look at the the series two part of Tulip. Over here, this is this is a reasonably advanced one. So, so some. So as I as I went out to each additional planet, I'd, I'd, I put into place the lessons I'd learned on the previous one. So by the time I came to Tulip, I had a, a full LTN set up with all the stations. We have mines digging up the vitamelange, and then we're bringing it down to stations down here. So we've got iron ore being brought in, we've got vitamelange and stone being brought in, and then we're shipping all those out into the, into the into the processing system. 
And to deal with that, over here I then had, uh, which end does this start at? Yeah, okay, so we had the, the vitamin melange being brought in here. There are a couple of pulverizers in here that were crushing it, and then feeding it off to be roasted, and then processed into the vitamin melange spice. And then we had not a delivery cannon here that would fire it off to wherever it was needed, which would probably be Norvis orbit, but also potentially it could be, could be, could be sending some to Norvis itself, or to basically to any, we, we could have these set up to, to deliver to wherever it was needed. Because we're using delivery cannons at this point, we also needed these machines to be making the, um, the capsules for them. So something to put the vitamin lounge in to launch it off into space. And so we have all of these belts bringing in the various different things like copper wires and heat shield tiles and, um, and, and so on. And low density structures and explosives. And all of that is why I had these stations over here dropping off all the other stuff like the iron and the, and the stone and the, and, the, and the coal. Because with those, I can make oils and... Um, and and various various types of oils and so on and and make all the bits i need of those delivery cannon capsules and i could also make the where is it over here i could also make the ammunition for these meteorite defense cannons because i need again my my base on this planet needs to be defended from anything that could be falling out of the sky just generally protected so that was that was tier, that was a tier two a, a a series two level base we dig up the stuff we needed process it and deliver it via um, via delivery cannon, and, that, and then up in space, that was enough. I could feed that all, feed that all together, and I could make everything I needed. And so that was that was reasonably good. I was generally fairly happy with that. It, it, it worked. But for series three, I decided that it wasn't good enough. So as I sort of hinted at, I ripped up all of the stuff I had around here that was making those those tier one science packs, and instead instead of having all of the stuff being dropped into this delivery cannon chest here and coming in by rocket from Norvis here well I kept the rockets from Norvis bit for this at this point but all the raw materials all the raw resources I set up this massive array of, of landing pads over here for all the different resources that were coming in so we'd have here we have vulcanite for example and uh, beryllium and cryonite and an ice and uh, coal and iron and copper and steel and so on so they're all being shipped into a separate landing pad and then picked up by an LTN train and taken off as required. And this meant that I could concentrate much more on, um, I could have all the stuff tra transported around in much larger quantities much more easily by trains rather than waiting for bots to carry stuff around. And a big part of the reason I, I did this was because, partly because I wanted to expand further out and bots aren't that quick, but also because in space bots tend to crash because you get solar radiation, it interferes with the bots, and then every so often they'll just fall out of the sky and explode. And so it gets kind of expensive trying to do everything with, with, uh, with logistics bots. So using that system, I was then able to build up these island. These I mean, I'd call them villages if it was down on Norvis, but they're a bit bigger than that. They're almost sort of prong. They're all, they're prongs of my space station. I don't I don't have a good name for them. I'm afraid. But what I but each of these is making its own type of science. So if we zoom in on this one, you can see this is there's lots of pink stuff in here. This is energy science. So we've got stations down here that are bringing in things like thermofluid and then all of the resources that are needed to make the uh, these particular science packs. Then we're cooling the thermofluids down to uh, to give us the various chilling effects in the machines we need. And then going up here, we're making the data cards and uh, plasmas and things and data cards to make, in this case, the uh, the first cat first tier catalog. And then up here, they're passing them all up here, making more and more data cards, and we're making the tier two ones. Carries on further up here, and we're making the tier threes. And tier three was pretty much where I stopped with series three, um, because that was because I, I drew another line there. But then down here, we're doing exactly the same thing with astro science. So we've got the blue data types being made, and the blue catalogs one, tier two, tier three, all being made down here. Then we've got the materials, and these material, and they all oh, each of the and materials over here. So these are all orange, exactly the same sort of general idea in that we're feeding in the inputs wherever we at the top, and then tri they trickle through. We're making all the data cards and turn them into the science packs. Over here we've got the fourth tier. This is making the biological sciences, so everything's green as you'd expect. And again, it's the same sort of general idea. Uh, the, other, the other one of those is up here. We've got the rocket science, which is the, the simple one that I showed you at the beginning. There aren't very many. There isn't very much needed for this, so we're just doing all that in a little corner down here, and it's it, it's fine. It, it ticks over. It produces rocket science more than fast enough. So yeah, that's that's fine. We're happy with that. I can just leave it running. So once we've made all of those science packs, what what all those catalogs are, what do we do with them? Well, we shove them in a station like this, and then every so often, when they're needed, a train will come along, grab them, and it'll bring them up here. So, for example, this is a material science. So they'll get dropped off here along with some extra 
stuff for playing with around here. And they'll trundle down these belts go around here and here we're making them into the insights so if you remember my butterfly diagram you need to take in the catalogs to make into insights the insights get made into significant data down here by these by these computers so bring in all four of them and turn them turn into significant data which are these gold cards that come out here the insights also get passed along here so you can see them coming along this belt and along with the catalogs we feed them into these machines so each one of these will take in um, the catalogue appropriate for that specific science, the insight for that family of sciences, so in this case material science, this is material one, this is material in general, and then because it's a space science we bring in the significant data as well. Those all get fed in along with, for the first tier it's a plate of the appropriate um, exotic material, so iridium in this case. For the later tiers you also need to feed in the lower tiers science packs as well because they're, um, they're, they're hungry for those as well, so you get quite a lot of stuff being fed through. But again, it's the same sort of thing. So we've got the tier two um, catalogs along with the material insights and the, and, the, and the significant data. And the same over here with the tier threes and over here with the tier fours. And we do exactly that again up here with the biological, down here with the energy and with the astro as well. So all of that gets fed through. This is all put onto these belts, which flow down into the inputs for my science area down here. So and we've got other, and we've got the Norvian sciences being brought in by train, and the rocket science being brought in by train. So all of that gets fed through into all of these chests up here, and we're, so we're filling those up with a small amount of each different science pack. So they, they they will fill up if there's more than about if there's fewer than about 30 in there. So they should be kept about a bit over 30, and that will then flow through into these um, all these splitters here, which join it all together and stir it all up into a big mess, and we, which we then feed down these sushi belts here that go into the into the uh, in, into the actual science labs themselves, and this is where the science is done. And the reason I've split this off into two, unlike the one I had before, is because I discovered there wasn't enough throughput on one of these belts to, to, to feed all of the different science packs into into one of these labs. So I put in a second one, and then these unload on the other side. They come down here. So all of the ones that go into these machines, sorry, these these um, chests over here, go to go on this belt, and then all the ones that go into these chests over here go on this belt. So this way they're kept separated and we don't have a mess of things, of, 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 of the two belts trying to organise over the top of each other. And this works quite nicely and I think I have um, chat on one of my streams to thank for this particular design. So well done there, thank you for that. <laughs> so that was series two. I went out there, I upgraded everything. Actually I haven't, haven't quite shown enough. Uh, let's have a quick look at Frost. So on Frost I came out and I did some series two tier um, uh, production of, of materials. So as you can see there's a massive number of these pulverizers, chemical plants and so on making, so we've got we've got quite a lot of this coming in, we're not making an enormous amount of beryllium on the other side but it is it's chugging through, it's, make, it's producing it fast enough I think but the reason this is a tier 2 is partly, well actually two reasons, partly because I use my old naive system where I've just where I've comp where I've put in yes I've put in the productivity modules here but I've compensated for the slowdown from the productivity modules by adding in a lot more machines and that's very power hungry what I should have done here is gone in and set this up to uh, to use um, to put um, what do we call it beacons in here to get a bit more efficiency and a bit more speed out of these and that would have made the whole system run faster and more efficiently so this is a bit outdated and maybe at some point I'll come out and upgrade this, we, we shall see. But the thing that makes this a, a, a Series 3 system is if you see over here, everything is then being shipped on by rocket. So we're loading this beryllium into this rocket, it's two thirds full now, when it fills up it'll fly off uh, and that'll take the beryllium up to orbit where it's needed. Um, so if you remember on Series 1 we were using these delivery cannons to ship it out, which we've now, these are now deactivated. Series 3 we're using the, I said, did I say Series 2? Series 2 for the delivery cannons. Series 3 everything is being shipped around by rocket because you can fit so much more stuff in there. And I did the maths and I worked out that once you get your um, rocket reusability above about 60% or so, it's far cheaper to use rockets for all of this stuff. So this works. We drop in extra rocket parts here as and when they're required, and then we ship them, and then we use these rockets to uh, to ship all the resources out. So, good. Series three, tick. Series four is where it gets a little bit more exciting, and we've got to get a little bit more up to date. So if we go back to Norvis orbit, we can see up here. I've now moved beyond beyond the rocket stuff being brought in. So anything new that was done in series four, I moved on to spaceships. 
and spaceships are the new exciting thing at this point um, and at first I started using them in basically the same way I use the rockets this is functionally equivalent to a rocket really because it's got the same amount of storage on board pretty much and so it would load up from a belt that goes underground into here from the planet where it loads up and then it would dump out onto this belt that would load up the um, the warehouse here and again the trains can come and pick up from here for this for this area fine that's great um, the dif uh, difference is, instead of having to build a rocket every time out of lots of rocket parts, which some of which you don't get back, this spaceship will just keep flying back and forth forever. You just need to keep refueling it with um, with rocket fuel, and initially with just rocket fuel, and then later on with ion stream as well, because the the next the second tier of engines are the best ones I've got at the moment. And so I made several of these. This this one goes to Kothar to get the um, get the iridium. This one goes out to Tulip to pick up the uh, vitamelange spice. This one goes off to Asalia, another um, another moon I found that has a lot of oil on it, and that bring and then they, on, on Asalia we're processing oil into rocket fuel, and then this spaceship brings that rocket fuel up here into Norbit orbit, where it's put into the tanks, and then we use that to refuel all of the other spaceships around here, so we can keep keep everything just uh, ticking over there. We've got lots and lots of refueling spots. The next step after that, which um, I'm quite pleased with, let's have a look on Miokin for this one, because I think there's probably a ship there. No, there isn't. Let's try on Kothar. Let's have a, have a quick look around, see if we can find one of these ships. Maybe, maybe there's one on Kothar. Yes, here we go. The next step I did on these systems was to have these, um, these spaceships with trains on them. So the way these work is you have a couple of trains will be on the spaceship. The, tr the spaceship lands, the trains pull out, and go over here to fill up. The two trains that were already on the planet will already hopefully have filled up so they can then just go straight back onto the spaceship and the spaceship can then just lift straight off again. So it means the uh, the spaceship isn't waiting around waiting for 500 stacks of um, resources to come in down a little belt um, and as you can see with these uh, these were the store what is it 40 stacks each so this is actually slightly less stuff than one warehouse would be but it's so quick to load because the ship can touch down trains pull in ship takes off again it can be that quick if there's enough resources available and so it's um it's a nicer quicker more effective way of, of doing that and so here we've got one of the t one of the things i've been doing in series four is putting in core mining outposts on all of my planets so th in this case it pulls up iridium core fragments we pull out the iridium here and send it over here to be processed and then the remaining core fragments are loaded onto these trains and onto the spaceship so i can take them off to norvis where they are then no nope, that's down here somewhere they are then unloaded um, by a similar system here where the trains pull out dump onto the dump out stuff out here and goes around here and then we can then feed this off to wherever it's needed we sorry we can crush down the core fragments up here pass it around and it can be picked up by trains and taken off to wherever it's needed there is a noticeable problem here that the, the stone has backed up so i need to find a bit more of a drain on my stone supply um so that's going to be a little bit tricky i'm going to need to do something with that and i'm not sure what but i'll come and have a look at that and fix it in in, 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 a, in a proper episode and that can, uh, yeah, so that's that's that system. And I've used something very, very similar on Tulip here. Nope, that, that is the, exactly the same. Up here, here we go. So as you can see, this is this is another spaceship that takes trains. And they've come out. And now up here, we're, we're picking up all the processed types of vitamelange. Because I worked out that it's something like, you need to take something like 12 times as much vitamelange if you don't process it on, on the planet first. So I've got... A system over here where we, we're, we're pro doing all the different stages of vitamelange processing and even the later ones like turning it into vitalic acid and reagent and epoxy and then shoving those onto these trains over here they fill up with all those things then once they're full they go back onto the spaceship like this and once the train arrives on the ship the spaceship will notice that it's got everything it needs and it'll take off like that there we go <laughs> nice so that will then fly off back over to Norvis orbit, where it'll un it'll unload everything there and and, um, and give it all back. So let's see if we can find that. There's, there's, there's the spaceship. This is the one that's just taken off. So the, the spaceships are great because they are extremely flexible, extremely powerful. You can do all kinds of different things with them. You can transport fluids as well much more easily, um, which you can't do with rockets unless you put it in barrels, and that's a horrible, horrible time. Uh, you can do you can. Um, and you can send them up wherever you want them to go. You can use all kinds of rules for, for making them take off. But with great power comes great complexity. So with it, we, we also end up with all of these combinators on the spaceships. And this is how I tell them to decide whether to take off or not. So, well, for example, this one is watching to see... Uh, that's possibly a bad idea. This one is watching to see if anything is less than zero. Um, if 
if C equals 2, which means you've got two trains on the ship, here we're watching to see if it's fully fueled and if it's in a certain place. And so all of these things between them, they work together to tell, send signals out to tell the ship when to take off, when to leave and where to go when it does leave. So if you want to make a complicated route, you need more and more and more of these combinators on the ships. And it does get a bit complicated, but I think I've, I've got my head around it now. It's not too, It's not too difficult. I am more or less managing to make these ships do what I want. So Series 4 has been all about making spaceships um, and, get, and, and, and setting things up to work on a slightly more um, elegant system uh, with, with the spaceships rather than the rockets. And then also getting the fourth and final tiers of all the space sciences going. So up here we've got, as you can see, we've got the fourth tier of energy science going. And over here one of the more complex, complex things we did was, was this system which, which, where we ship out um, satellites or special space probes off to certain places and then we can launch them out and get these, these types of data out instead. So this is solar data, we've also got asteroid, data, asteroid field data being made as well in different places. So I went out to, in this particular case, I went to Kalidus orbit and over here we've got this tiny little system here. But this, this takes the, um, the spaceship lands here, robots unload the, um, the, the, the probes into these chests where they get put into the, uh, in, into the probe rocket silo here which will launch them out into space. They then come back with all the data cards that get dumped into here and then can be put onto the spaceship for it to bring them back again. The other tier 4 thing I've been doing up here in, uh, in deep space is setting up these um, beaming systems. So as you can tell by the sheer quantity of solar panels I've got here, these take a lot of power. But this allows me to beam three gigawatts with this one and one gigawatt with this one out into space at specific places. So I can use that, for example, <coughs> down on Norvis, I've got this power station over here that receives the beam from one of those systems. This can heat up to 10,000 degrees centigrade. And we can then make really, really hot 5,000, 5, no, 500 degrees steam here, which we then put out through these turbines, and we get quite a lot of power. And it doesn't require, and it's completely clean. It doesn't require any resources. It doesn't require, uh, after you've built it at least, it doesn't require any fuel. It just requires a steady supply of water. So I'm building that up here. I've got a smaller one as well on Miokin, which is slightly more complicated. Here it is, and this uses the um, the condenser turbines. And that means that a lot of the water that's used as steam gets returned as water on the other side. And we can pass it back around here and recycle it. Because Miokin doesn't have any water of its own on it. So I'm having to bring that over in, in, a, in, in another spaceship that lands here. It'll load up on Vulcanite. It'll load a bit of stone into it. It'll unload ammunition for the uh, meteorite defence cannons. And it also unloads water into these tanks here. So the ship will fly back and forth as and when any of these things are required. It takes it takes Vulcanite down to Norvis and it brings water from Norvis up to Miokin, which we then pump around. And it's then, as I say, then used for, um, well, for, partly for the um, uh, Vulcanite processing, but also for making the um, ma making generating power up here as well. So I finally managed to make Miokin self-sustaining on the power on the power front, which is I feel is quite an achievement. So that's a lot of what I've done in Series Four. There's probably quite a bit I've missed. I do recommend going back and having a look through the videos because this is just supposed to be a quick catch up and it's, oh dear, I've been going for more than half an hour already. But it's, <laughs> there's been a lot of stuff going on. So the next series, yes, yeah, series five is going to be me looking into deep space science. So we've got these ones here that require me to go off into into remote deep space areas and go out and, and, and harvest some naquium, um, which I'll then need to bring back and process and do all kinds of things to turn into these science packs. So that's going to be going to be interesting, but hopefully it's not going to be too difficult. I guess we'll, 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 we shall see how we get on with it as we go. But yeah, that means I need to then move out from my... So I moved out from Norvis into the Kalidus system, and then from the Kalidus system I then head out into the interstellar void, and then we can go out to some of these, um, some of these remote uh, asteroid fields like... Um, this one, where dark flare, for example, we can look at the surface here. We can see here we have some naquatite, which we can go in and we can start mining. Um, and then we can start trying to ship that back. And how we'll do that? Well, that remains a question for uh, for Series 5. So I hope you'll come along and join me for that. As always, new episodes every Friday and show, show me, showing a sort of summaries of what I've been up to. If you want to come along and see me actually playing and building the stuff up, then every Tuesday I'm, I run a stream on, on my channel and you can, you can come along. You can watch me actually hard at work, building up all, all of the bits and pieces I need in order to get these systems up and running. On Thursdays we have, well, currently it's Factorio Industrial Revolution stream with me and some friends, but we're pretty close to the end of that, so I don't 
don't think there's going to be more than one or two more streams of that. After that, we'll um, we'll be thinking of something else to play. I suspect we're probably going to stick with Factorio because we all quite enjoy it. But we'll either go for a different mod pack or we'll set up some funny rules for ourselves. Something like that. We'll see what we feel like. And then at the weekends, we've got various other um, exciting things coming out. So on, on so every Sunday, there'll be a, um, a GTA video released. Um, that's that's uh, me playing sort of various cat and mouse games with with, uh, with some friends, where they'll typically hunt me around the city. Maybe I'll be in a, a garishly coloured car, or maybe there'll be um, a, a big circle pointing them towards me so they can to help them find me. There's all kinds of clever things in there to keep it interesting and keep it fun. So I do I can I strongly recommend those videos. And also this on Saturdays, there'll be real life videos coming out as and when I have a chance. So, um, the chance to make them, chance to do something interesting. So, I think tomorrow, when this video goes out, there will be one coming out about my new car. So, that's that should be, um, hopefully, it'll be interesting to everyone. And then in the future, well, I've been doing some woodworking projects as well. So, there's plenty to come on, on that. I hope to see you in the future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.